Hello and welcome back to Here We Tow. Today I'm at Broad Lane Leisure and they've kindly allowed me to come and film. So today I'm going to be reviewing this. It's the Swift Base Camp 6, six berth caravan. You may know that previously on the channel I've reviewed the Base Camp 4, which is a four berth, and the Base Camp 2, which is obviously a two berth. So we're back again for the new six berth and I'm quite interested to see how this caravan's going to work. So what do we need to know about this six berth caravan? Well, first of all, let's start with the price, £27,000, quite a lot of money. Size wise, good thing about the base camp is it originally with the base camp too, it was designed to be small, lightweight, compact and towed for people that didn't have B plus E or had a smaller tow car. So size wise, this caravan in length is 21 feet and seven inches and in width it's six feet and seven inches so it is still quite compact in fact it's probably the smallest six berth caravan i could probably mention to you weight wise weight wise it's 1331 kilos mt plm it's going to give you a decent payload of 166 kilos it is on the alco chassis at the front we've got the large one piece window and a good size gas locker and you'll also be able to put a few other bits in there. Coming down the side, we'll start on the off side. So we've got the, we've got the base count decals. There is an option as far as I know, like the two and four to have different decals and personalize it. We've got this window here looking into the lounge. And then down here, we've actually got, which I think is quite nice, is an external shower point here. And we've also got our whale water pump inlet here to get water on board the caravan. Coming down, we can see our toilet cassette point here. So that tells us we're going to find the toilet situated here on the offside. We've got an alloy wheel. We've then got the outlet here for the whale onboard heating system that works on electric and gas electric hookup point and again I like to see that all these bits aren't going to be in the awning and affecting that at all. Then we have a window and this is going to look into the rear of the caravan where we're going to find seating and also the bunk beds that make up the six berths of the base camp six and then we'll come round the back. Now the first thing you're going to notice at the back is we've got the entrance door. It's not on the near side on the base camps, it is at the back. The good thing with this is, obviously when you open it, the entrance to the back, it gives that nice straight into view. Now what you can do with the base camps on all of them is buy a separate awning by Van Gogh which is going to affix around the rear of the caravan so you'll step out into the awning and it's going to give you a much bigger footprint for this caravan because as I say although it's six berth it's about the smallest six berth going and in nice weather that's great but in bad weather this is a fairly small space for five or six people. So that awning is something I personally would definitely be looking at investing in. So in bad weather, as well as inside, you've got somewhere to sit outside. The door as well, it is affixed with a hydraulic hinge up there to stop it opening all the way back. It is a one piece door, but we do get this nice window and we've got uh, a blind there as well. So I'll just close that up for now. At the back, we've got the big rubber uh, plastic bumpers, the swift design lights, and we've got our grab handles for manoeuvring the base camp. It's 1,331 kilos and this sort of size, you may well be looking at putting a motor mover on the base camp six, where you might not necessarily on the two or the four, but it has got the handles to manoeuvre the caravan around. The same as the two and the four, we've got this metal plate, one thing I've personally noticed is the door. With it being at the back, the back's quite high and it is quite a step in. As you'll notice, without a step, it's already like way beyond my knee is this. So you're going to need a good size step for actually getting in here. If you've got a bit of a mobility issue, it's just worth considering. However, the doorway itself is huge. We've got an excellent width on it. Now that's a really good wide door and it's a pretty good height. And we do have 
fly screens as well all the way round. So that's the back of the base camp six. Quite like the back of it. What we'll do now is we'll make our way down the near side of the base camp and see what services we're getting on there. On the near side, I've got a couple of features to show you. First of all, we've got a 230 volt plug socket here. So let's just give it a yank. I'm always worried that these things will just come off in my hand. So we've got plug socket here. Now the benefit of that is obviously if you have got the awning, you can use that to plug things like a teppanyaki, electric cooking devices, televisions, things like that in your awning. So that's a nice little touch there. We've got a window uh, there looking again into that rear. And then coming down, we see our Dometic vent. So we know we're going to find a Dometic fridge freezer here on this near side. We've got a window into the kitchen. This is where we're going to get the kitchen area. We've then got another lounge window. And last but not least, we do have a gas point down here on the front near side corner. Um, I, I obviously I can see why they've put it here because we've got the gas in the front locker but if you've got your awning down the back and the family are sort of more down there it is a little bit of a strange place to get your, your gas barbecue out but it's there for a practicality reason. Last but not least up on the roof which I can't quite see but take my word for it we've got an aerial and we've also got a solar panel as standard and that's great because if you're wanting to go on a site where you're not relying on electric hookup your solar panel is going to keep your leisure battery topped up and also when the caravan's in storage you don't have to worry about your battery so there we go that's the exterior of the base camp six it's compact it's funky and it does stand out and it's it is a bit different to the standard uk manufactured caravans what we'll do now is we'll dive inside and find out where we're going to find these six berths that i've been talking about we'll start in the lounge where i usually do start we've come in through that back door front of the caravans obviously behind me so what we're going to get in the base camp six well, let's say it's six feet and seven inches wide, but to be fair, it does feel like quite a nice space here in the lounge area. These are the two lounge seats. They're quite short, but they have got a good depth to them. And these are going to convert to make a large double bed. This bed, when converted, is going to be six feet six long this way and about four and a half feet this way. So it's a really good sized bed in that respect. What else in the lounge? Well, the first thing I've noticed, and I'm quite short, is that because of the slope of the roof, it does affect the headroom. I find that quite limiting, if I'm totally honest. But for the rest of the caravan, you've got about six foot five headroom, so it's not a problem further back. We've got the one piece window here. We do have the fly screens, as I mentioned, and we've got a large blind as well. So that's going to give us privacy. And that's the same on both of these windows because there aren't any curtains, but there are blinds. As well as the sofa area, as we come round, we've got two small storage areas here. They're not enclosed, they are open. We're going to find the whale control panel situated here on the offside and that panel is going to operate the air blown heating within the caravan and also we've got whale hot water as well. So we're going to have heating and hot water so we can use this caravan all year round. Over on this side here on this panel which just starts feeding into the kitchen we're going to find our aerial point a 12 volt and also a plug socket. So we're going to position our television here and we've also got two more plug sockets here which is great for the kitchen area. I'll make my way into the kitchen now because there's not much more to say about the lounge. It's compact and it's cosy. There is a small flap for putting on some cups of tea but there is an actual table that's stored in the wardrobe that you can put out here for eating meals at if you're inside. Coming down, we go into the kitchen area. So the kitchen area is on the near side of the base camp six. It's got this gray finish to it along with the, the woodwork as well. I quite like that, I must say. There's a good amount of worktop space, but if you do have a television here, it is going to eat into that a little bit. So just be mindful of that. I'll start first of all at the top and work my way down. As we can see, 
we've got three storage cupboards. Now these are pretty good sizes to be honest and what I really do like is the depth that we've got on these. The, there's plenty of room for cereal boxes and things like that so really good. We've got a rack here for our plates and then we've got this for our mugs or glasses and again another good size cupboard there. So kitchen storage up ahead yeah that's that's excellent is that definitely wouldn't uh, be unhappy with that. Now we'll work our way down. So here we can see we've got uh, gas burners. There's three rings here, quite obviously. We can't cover those over. Those are exposed all the time. Coming down from that, now we've got a Thetford gas appliance and this is the oven and grill all in one. Um, obviously there's always a compromise and here we're compromising that we're not having a separate oven. Instead, we're going to find more storage space, but we've got a nice gas oven and grill there. Underneath it, I'll just open this up for us. So we've got a slide out drawer here. I do quite like these style of latches. I always find them quite positive. And then we've got another drawer, only small, but again, put bits and pieces in there. And then moving along, we've got another little cupboard with a small pull out drawer. I personally, I'd prefer to see a pull out rack here so you can pull that out because I'll be absolutely honest, it's a bit of a waste of space for me is that. These drawers are never that easy to get into, but you know, that's just my opinion on it. I'd rather see a pull out rack. And then here we've got our Dometic um, fridge freezer. I'll just give that, open that there. I've child locked it for my own safety. This is about 83 litres. And as we can see, it's a good size fridge freezer, it runs on gas and electric, and there is a nice freezer compartment. If you're buying this caravan as a sixth berth, chances are you've got children with you and you definitely want ice creams in there. So important to me. What I would say again, the compromise, because this is a sixth berth, I find that might be a little bit small, that fridge freezer. It's again, just something to think about. Um, but yeah, for me, maybe a little bit small. I'd rather have had a tower fridge freezer built in somewhere. We've got a cutlery drawer there. So again, not, not massively deep there, but you should get enough in there for five or six people. And then we've got another little cupboard here. And in here, we're going to find a table there um, because we've got the table that's going to be put out in the lounge and a table as well for at the rear of the caravan where the other seating areas are. So that's the kitchen area. It is a good space and there's plenty of width here as well. It's not, it's not too claustrophobic, so I do like that. And above me up here, you'll see we've got a really good size vent. So that's letting lots of light in as well. Another feature that I like. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move over onto the off side and just do the bathroom before we move back into the rest of the living space. So let's tackle this side first of all. So let's head into the bathroom. So on the off side, we've got this mirror first of all, which isn't bad actually, to be fair. And then we go into the bathroom. So I've got a nice lock on the bathroom for a bit of privacy. Um, what I'll say, if I'm absolutely honest, for £27,000, this is a little bit basic. To say it's a little bit basic is probably an understatement. It's incredibly basic. Um, we go in, we've got a sink, which is a good size, and there is a swivel tap. I do like the swift swivel taps. There's no shelf above it, so at least when you're washing your face or shaving, that isn't interfering with what you're doing. So you have got the full use of that space. There is a good size mirror and there's a light above it as well. Underneath you'll see there's no storage at all, but we do have an air vent, so at least it's heating the space. Here we've got the shower, so good to see that there is the shower, obviously quite essential sometimes for the six people, especially with the, the kids. We've got a bench seat set for toilet and then there is a hook here for the towel, uh, for your towels. And then there's one little storage cupboard just in this corner and it is very small. You probably get your toothbrushes in there. And then there is the shower curtain. So, yes, it's practical. Yes, it does what you want it to do. But it's very, very basic. It's quite disappointing. When I opened the door, when I looked at the caravan, 
I was a little bit disappointed if I'm honest. There is a nice uh, vent above though, so you can open that when you are showering. And again, that's bringing plenty of light into that bathroom space. So it is brightening it up. This to me is probably the biggest compromise of the whole of the base camp. So that's, that's pretty good going to be fair. Right, let's carry on down the caravan and have a look at these bedroom spaces next. So I'll close this door. There we go. Right, what I'm going to do is venture down now into the rest of the living space. So what we're going to find next on the off side is the wardrobe. Now this opens out and in here we've got another table here. We've got a rail for obviously hanging clothing. The aerial comes into here. There's a little bit of space there and this is where you're also going to be able to store the ladders for using on the bunk beds. A little bit limited again if the six of you um, don't bring many clothes will be my absolute honest opinion on that because there's not going to be room for them all. So there we go. Right now we're coming down. So what I've got here, I've got the bed space set up as as the beds and on this side it's almost like in day mode so we can look at these two modes so let's start on day mode first so during the day if you didn't have the, the bed set up you've got these two seats which you can see here these quite are quite a good size to be fair uh, there is a table you can see the hole in the floor here so the table is going to be sat there so you've got the you, the kids are going to be able to sit here and do bits and pieces that they're doing if you're wondering about how to set one of these up, I'm not demonstrating that in that, this video. If you look back at our base camp two and four video, I do demonstrate this. And what I'll say is it is quite a faff, um, hence I'm not demonstrating it today. Um, as you can maybe see here with these metal hinges, and I'll show you it on this one that is set up when we come to that. This is going to pull up and it creates uh, the bunk bed, which you can see on this side here. So when you set that up, you're going to get the bunk bed. Under here, this is going to convert into a second bed, which again, we can see that fully demonstrated on that side as well. So we'll have a closer look at that in a minute. These beds, when set up, they're five foot 10 in length, but they're only one foot nine in width, which is pretty small. So if you've got larger children, just make sure they're going to fit in. The bunk bed, there is an upper weight limit on the bunks and that's 77 kilos, which I think is about 11 stone. So that's fairly generous. Obviously, if you're thinking about adults, then they're going to have to be small adults. So this is day mode and you'll have your table. We've got the window. Now storage, storage is up here in these lockers, as we can see, and it's these base camp bags. They do unhinge from the hinges here on both of them, and you can actually take them out. So you can fill these up at home. This is, this is where you're going to be putting your clothes. So if you're quite happy that your clothes are, are folded up in these bags, then these are great. You can also put a little bit of bedding in these as well. And then when you want, you just put them back in. If you're short, um, they're a little bit, they're a little bit of a reach, but nothing too much. And as you can see, they do have a zip front panel. So you all together, you've got six of those. So that's where you, you're sort of going to be putting your clothes. Although I don't know, you'd have to work that to be honest. Um, so on this side, as I say, this would be your day mo mode. This shows you what you're going to have on a night. So this is the upper bunk we've got these here to stop children falling out this is your little ladder and again these do store in that wardrobe there um, the the mattresses are fairly comfy to be fair but you might want to get a memory foam just on there just to soften that up and and a sleeping bag's probably your best option as well as opposed to trying to get a load of bedding in because on a on a daytime when you folded this away and you want to use it like this because this looks like this and this looks like this in day or night mode where are you going to store your bedding there's a, a little bit of storage under the front uh, sofas and you could just slide something under here but personally I'd want a sleeping bag and get it nicely rolled up and, and closed up tight so again we can see we can see how this actually works in practice and as I say if you want to see me do it 
look at base camp two and four where I do <laughs> I do have a go um, yeah and we can see the metal hinges here so that's that's it and in terms of privacy we do have a privacy curtain which is just here on your side there it'll be white um, but basically um, it's, it's this color um, and it pulls across to separate the the adult area to the children's area um, and there's there's plenty of obviously straps on the roof that are holding bits and pieces together uh, and what have you so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dive back into the lounge area and just do a bit of a summary on the base camp six so I'll see you back in the lounge so there we go that's a look around the swift base camp six six berth caravan and probably as I say the smallest six berth I've seen so what do I think well £27,000 it is quite basic if I'm absolutely honest this caravan is a little bit basic for me for what you're getting for six people you've got to think about the compromises which is the fridge and freezer space and a very basic shower room which for some people that is not going to be a problem at all but for a family caravan it is quite basic Definitely, I would be looking at purchasing that Van Gogh awning for the back to give you a bigger footprint. But also what you've got to think about is once you're on your pitch, although this caravan is short, it's not that short. So you've got to make sure you're actually going to fit on. Most pitches are going to be approximately maybe eight metres in length maximum, sometimes a little bit more. But I always think if you think eight metres, you're probably not far wrong so make sure that you're not going to be too long to get on a pitch and that's quite important i do like all the features on the outside i like that we're getting that external gas point although it is at the front of the van it's nice to see an external shower point that's great if you're washing off your bikes your dogs things like that so that's a practicality because some people that buy this base camp they are going to be going off and doing sports. They want it because they're wanting to go cycling or canoeing or whatever it is. And they don't just want to be on a caravan site with loads of other people on the holidays. And I totally get that. So it's got those bits to it that are going to make that, that bit more of an adventure. But if you're a family considering this caravan, just be mindful that it is quite small and compact and I'd definitely go and have a look at one, sit inside it and just see how it feels for you. Overall, it's got what you're going to need and I do like the solar panel. It's got that good whale heating and water system as well. So positives, certainly. Beds, they're not massive. They are quite fiddly to put up. Having done them, they are quite fiddly. If you've got a base camp, you might think that they're quite simple and straightforward once you've done it a few times. So please put that in the comments because if people are interested, that could be good feedback for, for them. So there we go. Yeah, the base camp six, the bigger brother to the two and the four. It certainly looks different to things on site. It is a good fun caravan. It has got that increase in price that we're seeing across the board now. But if you want something that's going to give you fairly good value for money, really, when you compare the price of other six berths, then it might be the one for you. I hope I've not sounded too negative in the review. I do like to be honest and I do like to put across what I think and what I feel when I look at a caravan. And that is honestly what I found from my, my first look at it today. And I'm just obviously feeding that back to you. So there we go. So if you're interested, get to a dealership and go and have a look yourself. I'd just like to say, obviously, thank you to Broad Lane who have allowed us to come and film today. That is really appreciated. So I will sign off there with my usual. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.